We're live. We're live. Oh, hello, everybody. Hey, internet. Hello, friends. So, uh, welcome to the Liquid Lunch, episode two. I'm your wonderful host, Pat Quinney. Uh, as always, I'm joined by the owner of Level 6, Stig Larson. Hello. And this week, we have two awesome, very special guests. Uh, first, we have Ashley Ray. She's one of our new uh, team members here, one of our new sales reps. So Ashley's been here for two weeks yeah, now, so weeks. still a little fresh, Yeah. Um, but she is a fishing expert. Uh, so she, you can follow her on Instagram, her page is She Loves to Fish, yeah. correct? Uh, and then also to my right, we're joined by one of our ambassadors, our brand ambassador, uh, Roberto. And Roberto, um, he specializes in kayak fishing, that's what you do best. You're on the Thanks, Canadian team? Uh, yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. Thankfully we uh, made the team. Uh, we're very excited. We're going to be uh, competing in the Pan American uh, Kayak Bass Fishing Championship cool. in uh, Tennessee at the end of the month. So That's just awesome. looking forward to it. Yeah, That's so awesome. we have two experts here. Uh, so this, this whole episode is going to be about kayak fishing. Um, and if you have questions, please feel free to type them in on our YouTube live page. You can also email us or get at us through Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I think we've got a couple of team members. As always, we have Jesse behind the camera and we also have Kevin behind the camera. Um, so they can answer or they can relay questions onto us. So please feel free to just send those in as they come in and we're happy to help answer them. Um, but first things first, we had a sweepstakes. Yes, we did. For the last month. Uh, we're not gonna announce that just yet, are we? We are gonna announce like it. Like right now? Right now. We should make them wait. We should wait 10 minutes at least. You guys want to wait 10 minutes? Wait 10 minutes. Yeah, make oh, them wait. Man. Yeah. All right, that's on stick. Yeah, that's on stick. 10 minutes. So let's get to know our guests a little bit more here. So, Roberto, we'll start with you. Um, how did you find out about Level 6? How did you get into kayak fishing? What made you approach, you know, um, Level 6 as, as a kayak fisherman? What brought you towards um, Whoa, well, that's that, Those like are that. many questions. Just I know. I know. One, at time, one at a time. One at a time. It is a Friday. It is, it a, is Friday. a Friday. And he said, we have to keep on time so yes. that's why you're throwing them all at yes. once okay perfect yes. all right so uh how did i start kayak fishing that's a very uh awesome question as i started fishing from boat so okay. since i was since i came to canada actually in 2001 I, well i came in 2001 2002 that's when i started fishing because when as soon as i got here it's like whoa there's a lot of water in mexico where i'm from originally mm -hmm. we don't have as much water so i never fished before so once here, I started fishing, caught my first fish, was hooked, pun intended. Yes. <laughs> so I got, I got hooked, and uh, <clears throat> my dad and I bought our first boat that we restored, and, you know, with time we started, you know, changing boats and everything, and finally I was in a nice bass boat, but life happens, I had to sell my boat, mm -hmm. and I was determined not to fish from the bank again. So I saved some money from that boat and got kayaks. So when you say life happens, awesome. you mean you got married and had kids? No, on the contrary, I got demarried oh, de with kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right, exactly. So, um, so I went uh, to kayak fishing, and there's no turning back, man. I really love it. Uh, it's fun. People are amazing. The community is amazing, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's coincidence, but I've managed to caught my, catch my biggest fish from a kayak than I ever did from a boat. How big was it? Well, it all depends what fish we're talking about, but, you know, bass, probably 19-inch bass, 18 mm -hmm. and three-quarters, something like that. Then last year, I was at a media event in Niagara Falls. Actually, a year ago today, I caught a 45-inch muskie oh, from wow. a kayak. Nice. So, cool. it, awesome. I mean, it, oh, it's nice. Pat, that is almost, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that's my like quickly my yeah. my my story about fishing. Now, how did I get involved involved with level six? Well, I knew Kevin mm -hmm. uh, from before when he was at his previous uh, uh, employer with his previous employer, and I mean we got to know each other uh, at a personal level. And once he moved on to level six. He actually asked me if I wanted to become uh, an ambassador for, for Level 6, yeah. which is a company that I've always liked because it's a Canadian company mm -hmm. and that's and makes some great products and that's exactly what I wanted, you know, as one of my sponsors. Awesome. 
So well, I'm yeah. glad we were able to cross paths and that Kevin brought you to us because mm -hmm. um, you know it is it's a market that we're just starting to get into and it's a really fast growing market as far as paddle sports goes. It's yeah, it's the new it. it's the newest thing in paddle sports and uh, I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Uh, there's a lot of people that love to fish, and not everyone can afford a motorboat and you know the gas to go in it. You know it's yeah, an, and the, the insurance it, to go yeah. with it. All you need is a kayak paddle and you know you're you're on your way. You actually, a lot of the time, you don't even need the paddle really with all the, the yeah. paddle drives and stuff like that. Um, before we get into the say, we jumped the yeah. here a little bit. We Speaking did. of Canadian brands yeah. out there. So, again, uh, today we're drinking the Killer 93, the KLR 93. Um, so, it is a Kolsch style it's ale. Cold. Uh, cold. And it's okay. ice cold. Um, I already had one before recording, so I feel great. Uh, they're delicious. <laughs> And uh, this was actually, this beer was brewed uh, in partnership with uh, Doug Gilmore, mm -hmm. um, legendary Canadian hockey player, um, you know, big, uh, big celebrity with Leaf Nation, so yep. Leaf fans, rejoice. Awesome. Uh, if you're not a Leafs fan, it's still great beer. I'm an Ottawa fan, and I'll still drink it. So, um, thank you to the Whitewater Brewery. Yeah. Thank you to Doug Gilmore. Thank Cheers. you to... Uh, Cheers, round two. Yeah. Cheers Paddlers to and fishing. Fishers. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, level six. Mm -hmm. Also, a little props too to Chris, who just won top 40 under 40. Yeah, in Ottawa. That's amazing. In Ottawa for Whitewater Brewery, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. Those guys deserve, especially Chris as well, like they deserve everything that yeah. they get. They're super hardworking uh, and really just positive figures in the in the community, yeah. not only in paddle sports, but in um, just business in general. Yeah. Um, always looking like. One of the things I admire about him is the whole getting away from plastic. A lot of beer comes wrapped in plastic, especially when yep. those like those open face cases. He eliminated that. They're um, they're really um, environmentally friendly or trying to push that boundary uh, and just trying to evolve as a company. It's it's really amazing to see he gets the recognition that uh, he deserves. And there's so many other people behind that whole operation that deserve sure. shoutouts as well. Um, and Chris will be the first one to admit that. So it's yep. pretty cool. Thank um, you, Chris. Yeah. yeah. And everyone. Cheers. I think they're in <laughs> I think San Jose or something. I just found my new favorite beer from mm -hmm. Whitewater Brewery. Okay. It used to be the Farmer's Daughter. That's my favorite. Yeah. I like it a lot. And this one is, wow. And I, honestly, I cannot drink just any beer. I have some esophageal problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, this one is perfect. So yeah. the ones that are too hoppy are the ones that are really Yeah, it's definitely you know, easy it's, to drink. It's, it's not super yeah. nice. Yeah, it's not too overwhelming. Yeah. Cheers. Um, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, cool. So, Ashley, yes. let's learn a little bit more about our newest sales rep because yes. I honestly don't know you that well either. Yeah, we um, there's a lot of boxes started. in the office. I don't really see you at all. Um, <laughs> I'm behind boxes. You ask, you ask me the occasional question. Um, so, how did you get into kayak fishing and then how did you find level six i, I know we found you um but um yeah how did you how did you get into kayak fishing what got you into well this whole... uh, i'll start with how i got into fishing in general mm -hmm. i was i didn't come from a fishing family which is kind of you know different a lot of people are surprised yeah. by that so my parents don't fish but uh, i was lucky enough to be introduced by a family friend when i was five and that was, you know, we would go back to my, my parents' fr owned a lot, friends owned a lodge, and we would go back every summer. The owner of the lodge would take my brother and I out fishing, and it just became one of my favorite childhood memories. We'd go back, you know, we try to go back each summer, and I really took to fishing. My brother's not really into it. Like, he'll go out occasionally, but it just, it really, uh, something I love. So then I, as I got older, I just wanted to get more independent and uh, went to college. I didn't have a lot of money after graduating, but I got a nice tax return one year, bought a Hobie kayak, fished out of that okay. exclusively. And then, you know, I've, I fish out of a boat now. But, you know, a lot of people think that it's kayak fishing or boating one or the other but i honestly think that there's space for both like there's opportunities from a kayak there's opportunities from a boat i just think the most important thing is getting out on the water so. mm -hmm. and i've had some amazing experiences in my kayak you know i've gone to some cool places and met some amazing people like you mentioned the kayak fishing community it's pretty incredible and likewise i've had amazing experiences in my boat too so cool so I just like to fish all year long. I ice fish as well. Yeah. And uh, 
Just so it's more about the fishing for you. You just absolutely, you're absolutely passionate yeah. about it. Yeah, and yeah. any way you can get out. I mean, I fish from shore. I fish from kayak, from a boat. Like, whatever you can do to get out on the water is, yeah. is good. Very cool. And uh, my experience with Level 6, I used to work at Sale. Mm -hmm. So Sale is one of the retailers that, yep. uh, Great that retailer. carries Level yep. 6. So that was my first sort of introduction to it. And if I'm not mistaken, um, a few years ago I was out with one of my coworkers from Sale. She invited me to stand on paddleboarding, and I'm pretty sure that it was the level six boards that we were on. Okay. Yeah. So I got to go out for the first time on the Rideau River. Cool. And now I'm looking forward to uh, borrowing a couple from here. Awesome. Yeah. And I want to do some like sight fishing up shallow. Mm -hmm. So like for carp and gar yeah. and stuff. So. Yeah, it's one of the perks of working here. You get yeah. access to set boards and stuff. Exactly. And, uh, so that's yeah. sort of me a little bit. <laughs> cool. No, very cool. Um, yeah, it's good to to get to know like the the faces that represent our, our brands. And mm -hmm. you'll if you're around the Ottawa area, or I guess you guys are kind of all over Ontario in general, right? So if you see Roberto or Ashley on the water, feel free to say hi. They're both very nice and approachable. Yeah. Um, we're not speaking as tour. scary as we look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking yeah, to her as well. I mean, as well. Yeah. They're out at uh, different events talking about, um, you know, you're specifically more women getting women into fishing. Yeah, I'd really try to do that. That's great. So, yeah. kind of the face of these new sports in Canada, which is yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, is it time to announce the winner yet? I'm excited. I want to do this. It's How's our viewership minutes. going there, Jesse? What's that? How's our viewership going up there? I mean, are we over 2,000 yet? Do we announce it now? Six million. A couple million. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Well, we're going to announce it whether okay. we have viewers or not. Yeah. Can we People, do a drum roll? We yeah, can do a drum roll. <laughs> um, so our winner is, drum roll please. We've got Carrie Standard out of West Virginia. So yes. awesome. Carrie Standard congratulations. from West Virginia. Congratulations. You won the ultimate uh, sup, or sorry, not kayak. Sup, kayak fishing package. Uh, so there's a lot of great gear there. I can't even remember everything that's in there. Tons yeah. of great brands. Mm -hmm. Tons of great brands. So we've got uh, level six, obviously. Uh, we've got uh, Flambo. We've got Rapid. Keep it up, uh, Jesse. Yeah, I, I can't remember. That. Bending Branches is in there, yes. is it not? Yak Attack. Yak well. Attack. Salus. Um, Salus, yeah. Uh, um, it's a pretty it awesome package. Because, uh, it was over, but, uh, Yak Power. Yak Power is in and there. Also, um, yeah. Lots so, of great brands. So, so Kerry will be Kevin's really outfitted guy. now. Yeah. He will be. Everything basically but a uh, kayak. She. Yeah. She, everything but yeah. a kayak. Yeah, Kerry will be yeah. totally set. That's what it is. Kerry, congratulations. Um, Guys, I have a question from Alan Sanders. What yeah. brand of kayaks do you uh, prefer fishing from? Oh. Roberto, do you want to give that one first? Roberto's a little biased. I'm biased. Uh, so I'm sponsored say. by uh, Jackson Kayak, and uh, it's a great company. They make great boats. Uh, I have to say that. And uh, I'm going to. Is there a specific model? That you that's like? where yeah. I'm going, yeah. yeah. So right now, you know, the. Uh, Good all-around boat for river and uh, lake fishing. Specific model from Jackson Kayak would be the Liska. I think Liska, you know, very stable, fast, okay. low profile, and that that's my favorite up to now. I have a big rig FD, so a pedal-driven mm -hmm. uh, kayak, waiting for me mm -hmm. in Niagara to where I'm going actually tomorrow. I'm going to okay. be out fishing for a week. Yeah. Cool. And EJ, the owner of, of Jackson Kayak, he's so EJ involved Cole. right now in kayak fishing too. So you know that his designs, and he's a he user. He's, a, he's yeah. a user. Yeah. Um, and he was like that in Whitewater, still is like that in Whitewater. He's not only a designer, he's a user, and he's a face of the company. Definitely. So you know the things that happen yeah. uh, happen for a reason. Yep. So, I mean, that's why yep. they make great boats. Yeah. But you well, had mentioned you were. Hobie well, before. yeah, so I fish out of a Hobie, and my, you know, people ask me, like, because I don't have a kayak at this very moment, but I still talk to people online all the time about all different online. types of fishing. <laughs> 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 but uh, my advice is it really kind of depends on the type of water you're fishing, because the Hobies are awesome, because, you know, you've got the hands free uh, pedal drive, so mm -hmm. you can have your hands free and. But on the flip side, I mean, if you're fishing a river where there's a lot of rocks and stuff like that, you know, you might be better suited for a paddle kayak. And, you know, the features, there's so many different features out there. It's amazing year to year what, you know, the little upgrades that the different companies do. Yep. So, you know, fishing is one of those things where you can spend a lot of money or you, you don't have to, but my advice is just to get the best kayak that you can afford with the features that suit you because ultimately, 
you want to make the most of your time on the water and you don't want to fight with your equipment. So, I mean, it really goes with anything that you're into. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's a, a good point. So I was actually about to ask that, like with the, the, the uses for pedal drive versus like just going with your paddle and stuff. So you were mentioning, uh, shallow rivers, yeah. you, you definitely want to go with paddle. Well, you don't and even below. with like with the Hobies, they have like if you push one foot forward, the fins will go flat. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can get over obstacles, but yeah. if you're going to be consistently in a, a river setting or a shallow setting, like you might be better off with a paddle mm -hmm. just so that you can, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's more designed for that. And yeah. you know, I've been fishing all the different models so. Yeah, Hobie had they de they designed that original uh, fin system, the pedal drive it's system. Mirage yeah. drive. I believe that patent was up last year. Yeah. So you start seeing a bunch of more people come out with a different version of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're seeing that come out now in other brands. Um, what about um, battery powered? Um, I haven't done drives? it. I mean, I I don't know. I haven't done it. It's it's a good option. Uh, certainly. In our group, in uh, the group that you know, I I founded mm -hmm. about three years ago, we don't allow uh, motors in kayaks, electric motors. Okay. There are options, definitely. Actually, the big rig FD that I have right now has the option now, or it's coming out very soon. They're still tweaking out, the, you know, very fine mm -hmm. details to put an electric motor on the lower unit instead yeah. of the pedal drive. System. Okay. So it actually just fits just exactly like the pedal system mm -hmm. so you can actually use uh, a, an electric motor to motor through okay. it's great for pre-fishing and that's uh, something that if i end up getting one i'm going to be using it for pre-fishing my tournaments what's a pre-fishing mean pre-fishing means that you go fish before the tournament day like okay. to kind of exactly scouting yeah. marking your your sure you're not burning all your energy exactly yeah, so i can do that you know go and you know put waypoints on my fish finder okay and then uh you know day of the tournament i just swap my unit instead of having the electric motor i'm going to put my pedal system and mm. away you go so you mentioned the group that you're in is this a tournament like what's it's it a it's a local uh group of yeah. kayak anglers it's called uh, the Kayak Anglers Association of the Uruguay. Okay. Why I made it the Uruguay is because I wanted to include the, the people from Quebec, from mm -hmm. Gatineau. I've definitely heard of this. And mm -hmm. yeah, and it's grown so fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I started just because I used to fish with the director of marketing from Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, James, 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 James Macbeth. Yep. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, but he's always on the run. He's always yeah, traveling he's and all that. Yep. He's super busy, you know with all the companies that he's be, he's a director of marketing for. And so I, there were times that I couldn't go out because I don't really like to go by myself. Mm -hmm. So um, I created this and it started, you know, at a bar. Mm -hmm. We had a few That's all good things do. Yeah. <laughs> and um, there was like 12, 14 people showed up. I'm like, okay, good. So we went out fishing yep. and then people started, you know, joining and joining and right now we're probably this started pi day so march 14 2016 and to date we are up to like 726 what? visitors wow. wow yep and uh, it's mostly i mean i'm gonna say all of our members are from ontario and quebec and the only reason why we decided to do this is so that we have people attending our tournaments because now we turn into a tournament series. So we have five bass uh, tournaments every year and three other species just until we get our bass season open because as you know, yep. it opens like the third, third weekend week of June. Of yeah. June. Yeah. 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 So it's a long, and it's a very short bass fishing season, so yeah. it's a long wait to get yeah. there. So we have tournament for catfish, which we had to cancel it was supposed to be tomorrow because of the uh, high water levels. Yeah, yeah. So yeah we're, we're all under big flood watch right now yeah, in Ottawa. Yeah. I'm not sure if For those know, that but. don't know, it's been pretty brutal. A lot of people have lost their houses and, yeah. and stuff. So yeah. our heart goes out to those people, obviously, right. and uh, to all the volunteers that were filling out sandbags and stuff. Like, good on you. Thank million you, guys. Sandbags. Yeah, so yeah. thank you, everyone yeah. who did that. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's been it's a hundred year flood. Mm -hmm. I've, nobody's ever seen the river it's this high. It's twice. Yeah. Uh, once in a 100 years, that, that's what, yeah, yeah since 2017. Yeah. So it's it, it's been hitting us hard. So, yeah. 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 Guys, I have a question from Dave Fowler. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Hey, Dave. It's probably more geared towards uh, Stig and Pat, but oh, where God. does most of the research and development Great. of the gear happen? 
most of the research and development. Yeah, so right here. Right, yeah, right, right here. Um, <laughs> this room, actually. Yeah, there's a it's few of us here that. Um, well, do you want to tackle this one, Stig? Yeah, I mean, we have uh, three full time designers here. Well, I guess a design part plus a managed part, but um, everything that everything that you see from level six happens in this building, from fabric research to patterning to creating sample prototypes and then getting them tested by you know, our, our ambassadors. Yeah. So it's all done here. Yeah, so the industrial designer, he's really great. Uh, and we also have like a, a fashion designer, yeah. if you will. Um, so they kind of collaborate. And then, you know, we're paddlers here at this at this company. So uh, a lot of the time they'll ask us what we think. And if we don't know the question, we bring in our athletes and, and some of our, our team members and, and they'll help us prototype stuff. So yeah. as soon as we get like a design, uh, and a technical package done, we get a sample here, and then we put it through rigorous testing. So, yeah. for example, right now, we're testing some skirts. Yeah. Um, so some there's, a little, suits for there's a little year. nugget for you whitewater paddlers. Yeah. Uh, there's some fun stuff coming down the line. It's all up for testing with our athletes, and they're testing it on the river, on the Ottawa River yeah. right now in a 100-year flood. So yeah. we're going to know whether this stuff works really well or if it uh, needs some, some uh, work. Uh, and, you know, design process can go from if... It's smooth, six months, to it's, it's two taken years us sometimes. two years, yeah. two, three years to get some products uh, yeah. to market. So um, that's kind of where it, it starts. But we, you know, between our designers who just have a good grasp of like um, how to design any sort of piece mm -hmm. of gear and look for failing points and stuff like that. And then we also kind of amalgamate that process with our um, with our athletes and us because we, we're paddlers. Yeah. So, so we know what we're looking for in our gear. Uh, so that's you know. and we're super hands-on too. People, mm -hmm. I don't think people realize that you know to create you know to create a t-shirt. Yeah, there's cotton is cotton, um, but to create paddling gear, you know those fabrics just they don't just exist. You need to create that fabric. So you're you're weaving. We're actually weaving our fabric right now for 2020 mm -hmm. production, and it's specific to level six. Our the laminate memory is specific to level six, and it's just been 22 years of researching what works best for paddle sports. We put that into our own formula, and we create our garments. So yeah. you, just, you can't buy that fabric off the shelf anywhere. So That's hopefully really that cool. answers your question there, yeah. Dave. Thank you for the question. That's awesome. Um, so moving on to more questions for our two guest mm -hmm. speakers, because people don't really want to hear us talk. We have yeah. you guys coming. Okay, we're learning. We're all good here. Um, <laughs> bucket list. Destination yep. and fish. I want to hear it. Um, so Ashley, we can start with you. Well, funny enough, we were just talking about this. Uh, yeah, you and Roberto were nerding we out a little so bit before, uh, before <laughs> there's, we started uh, <laughs> There's a YouTuber that I've been connected with for a few years. Uh, he's a big kayak angler named Robert Field, and he does these trips to Panama, and they're catching, like, rooster fish and all kinds of crazy species Jesse, of kayaks. Jesse, can you Google rooster fish? Yeah. Right now. yeah. Google yeah. Robert Field Put rooster there. fish. But anyway, so that's definitely a place I'd like to visit. Also, Florida, like, there's a lot. So I'll, I'll Okay, give me, give me your top two. So I'd say right now, Panama's high on my list. Also, tarpon in Florida in okay. a kayak. They're really a strong fish, eh? They're, yeah. um, I've seen videos of those things. They're Does this pretty thing gnarly. Does this live in a lake? Look in the ocean. Thing. Yeah, there no, it is. It's in the ocean. It's in the ocean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm never going swimming. That, that is a no. high uh, fish on my bucket list, as well as tarpon, but there's many, many fish, so I'll just yeah. leave it at that. <laughs> and what about you, Roberto? Well, um, like Ashley said, we were talking about it earlier, and my bucket list fish, and just because how beautiful colors this fish has, it's the peacock bass. Yes. Okay. I'm a bass guy, so send me down mm -hmm. to South Florida. And Is that where they are? That's where they the are, actually, ones. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was yeah. pretty bummed down when I found out. I went to ICAST last year, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and ICAST is in Orlando, but I guess the water temperatures are not as warm yet there in Orlando to have uh, peacock bass. Okay. So uh, Like that? Oh man, they're beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're beautiful. They are beautiful. Wow. They're, yeah. they're another one so I really want to catch. When was ICAST? Was that was July. last year in July? Actually, July. This, this year it's July 9th to, yeah. to 12th. Okay. And the water was too cool? You were no, it's not. That, that Actually, the environment, I guess, the water temperature, yeah. wherever year round, is okay. not hmm. the optimal temperature there for peacock bass to, hmm. you know, 
grow in that area. Okay. But if you go down to, you know, southern Florida, Miami and that yeah, you know, that area keys. exactly, you can find them uh hmm. More abundantly, actually, on the side of the road, you have you know yeah, streams where you can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Oh. And while well, obviously in the Amazon, that would be yeah. a yes. great place to yeah. to go and catch some There's weird species. That, that would be nice to go there. over there. Yeah, you know, and fish from a kayak. Cool, cool. Um, How about you? Yeah. What's your favorite For fish? me, uh, I'm I, I'm goldfish? pretty simple. Like I I grew up <laughs> yeah goldfish <laughs> koi um, at the Rito Fountain. Yeah, I mean I grew up. Fishing in the Kawartha area. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm like as into it as you guys are, uh, but I definitely enjoy it. Um, I actually need to show you my fishing rig later. It's like a little Gatorade bottle that I use in my whitewater kayak, and I just take hand fishing line and oh, a little cool. yeah. deep diving lure on it, nice. and you just go. So yeah, you just Troll. put it out mm -hmm. and um, you, you just go and paddle, and it's amazing. Like in Algonquin Park, you're just smashing fish. Mm -hmm. like, it actually wow. slows you down, so you kind of do it towards the evening. Wow. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, large and smallmouth bass is generally what I fish for, but um, a big musky would be on my list, mm -hmm. and like a big, I would love to go to like Mexico and go get like a big sailfish like those um, swordfish I guess mm -hmm. is what you'd call yeah. them um, that's bucket list yeah. for yeah. sure um, I do have yeah. a question from John John shoot what is hey, one John. thing you wish you would have known or done differently when getting into a kayak fishing tournament ooh good question good question very great question hmm Every tournament is different. Not yeah, drank the night before? <laughs> well, that, that would be one, actually, and it's happened. Um, but I'd say go fishing before the tournament. Yeah, because of my, uh, of my busy family life, work life, and, you know. And on top of that, I, I enjoy, I'm not going to say I have to, but I enjoy organizing the tournaments and putting everything together and all that. I have very little time to fish. Right. you know days before the tournament and i think that's what i would do differently if i would uh, go to a tournament and needless to say now that we're going to be going to um the um, pan american kayak fishing challenge mm -hmm. um, that was a we're go yeah exactly we're going to be heading down four days before the actual tournament so, so where was it it's in Tennessee, in Tennessee actually, right. okay. and we're we're driving from Ottawa. Three of us, we're driving from Ottawa in my car, so all in one car. So that's a good thing. We're going to be sharing the driving. Uh, we're probably going to leave on a Saturday late afternoon. We're going to pull an all nighter, and then get to the lake, Center mm -hmm. Hill Lake in um, Cook Cookville, Tennessee, and we're going to start pre-fishing. That's cool. probably like a 15 or 16 hour drive. Yeah, I do. It's, yeah, I've done it I just chose to Tennessee's Alabama beautiful. If you get the yeah. chance to like drive around, if you've, mm -hmm. if you've never been there, it's it's absolutely a beautiful state. So. Yeah. Went yeah. once uh, yeah. to a uh, dealer summit. For, okay, for Jackson. Jackson, yeah. 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 Cool. But that, I've only, I have only been in that area, the, the Sparta, Tennessee yeah. area. Mm -hmm. that, I have not gone to the bigger city, so. Okay. Cool. I'd love to. So what about you? What would you yeah, recommend? Any advice? <gasps> Well, I fished two kayak tournaments, and in both scenarios, they were like in the U.S. So it's I didn't really have the opportunity to pre-fish, like for as for rules and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, as with any tournament, just finding you know, getting yourself familiar with the water, and that can start online. Like there's maps online, articles, blogs. Mm -hmm. Like I spend a lot of time traveling and fishing waters that are brand new. So. You know, I'll be writing an article about a lake I've never fished, so I do a lot of research online first and then go to the lake because ultimately, in any scenario with a tournament or even when you're out fishing, you really want to make the most of the time that you have on the water, especially when you're in a kayak because you don't have the luxury of just, like, ripping across the lake. So research ahead of time and then, you know, pre-fishing if you can. So I think that's pretty mm. solid advice. Talk to locals. Yeah, locals, locals will have shops. a lot of information. Yeah, uh, they they're willing to share. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing I found about the fishing, uh, I guess, community is yeah. there's not too much online. Like there is, there's quite a bit of information out Secret there, but it. it doesn't get very like specific. Yeah. You know, yeah. so which is. Uh, <laughs> But it's great because it does build a better sense of community because you actually have to go and introduce yourself and talk to somebody, put yourself out there, yeah. as opposed to just looking online, saying, okay, sweet, these are the sweet spots. 
I'm going out there yeah. Yeah. and not talking to anybody. You get a feel for the community that's behind that area. That's right. um, so that's that's one thing I do like about the, the kayak fishing community or the fishing community in general. Yeah. Mm. Well, and there's, uh, you know, like Facebook, Instagram and stuff, but there's also fishing apps. Like there's Fish Brain where you, it's all fishing. It's kind of like Instagram, but everything is fishing. People share and you can choose to share if you want to or not, but like right. lures and locations. So, I mean, I don't know. I find the fun of it is going out and, and figuring it out. Yeah, So totally. I'll do research, but I like to go out and like try to figure out the puzzle because that's yeah. what is fun for yeah. me. So um, That kind of brings me into you know, a good segue into the next question is any advice for newcomers to the sport? Um, you know, anybody who likes fishing but wants to take that next step into get into kayak fishing roberto do you have any advice for for anybody that's coming to the sport yeah my first advice would be try before you buy that would be okay. my number one advice go to demo days go to, right. go to your local local dealer and yeah. try the different vessels that they have to offer do your research online obviously and mm -hmm. then just you know, streamline your 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 uh, options to probably three or four kayaks. Then go to your local dealer and see if they have demo days. Try them and then make an inform, informed mm -hmm. decision. Because kayaks nowadays they're they're getting up there in price, expensive, right? Yeah. So it is yeah. an expensive it's an uh, investment. Investment sure. exactly. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be stuck with something that you're not going to be comfortable fishing right. out of. Now, if you're able to put in, you know, a good amount of money, let's, let's put it this way, towards a kayak, and that's what you want to do, do not start, if you can avoid, do not start with the other brands that are not as well recognized, because you're going to end up spending that amount of money, right. and then you, you decide that you want to, you know, move up, why don't you just do the one investment? Yeah. Don't go to the knockoff brand, basically. Well, yeah, don't go to yeah. The big I mean, store but, but this is brand. this is some for somebody that wants to yeah. get serious into, into yeah, kayak sure. fishing, right? And the the beauty of kayak fishing, like Ashley mentioned earlier, is you can go as bare bones as you want, or you can go as equipped as mm -hmm. uh, as you want. So it can yeah. be as inexpensive to us, you yeah. know, whatever you want to pay for outfitting your kayak. Yeah. yeah. I think actually, and even joining, you know, your group that you've organized here in, in the Udawe area, yeah. with 700 members is going to be some good feedback, and maybe there's even going to be a chance to Definitely. meet up and try some equipment before. Yeah, and uh, all the guys in, in the group, whenever we go out for either a tournament or we go for a friendly outing, uh, they're willing to lend their kayaks to any mm -hmm. bypassers. If you if you want that you're interested in it, yeah. you know here's my PFD, wear it. There's my paddle. This is my kayak. This is what it is. This is what it's like to fish out of it, and just go out, try it out. It's great. And it, that's that's what I like about this community. It's super approachable. Mm -hmm. and like take my kayak, yeah, no problem. Go for go for a ride. And, yeah, it's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Well, Ashley, I think that, uh, you know, as a female, as a minority in the fishing community, you know, I've had so many amazing experiences, but I've also had experiences that weren't so great. I mean, and I, you know, I don't need to highlight them, but I can say that sometimes it seems overwhelming going into a fishing shop. There's all this stuff mm -hmm. on the walls. You don't know where to start. So I think the key is just kind of getting started simple, like, you know, as much as we all love all of our gear and like all of our, and I mean like lures and rods and reels and stuff, um, you don't need to start with everything. Like it gets overwhelming. Start simple. Start mm -hmm. with something you can handle. Um, if you're learning to cast from the beginning, like when I was a kid, I used to take the bathtub plug out of the bathtub. My mom wasn't too happy about it. And use that <laughs> to practice casting off the back porch because yeah. I didn't live on the water. So practicing you know there's so much information online nowadays youtube articles mm -hmm. like you can learn how to do mm -hmm. so many things online and stopping in a tackle shops like here in ottawa we've talked about sale they're great there there's you know mm -hmm. lots of local tackle shops in the area and also if you are new to fishing and you have someone in your family or family friend that fishes get them to take you out and if you don't you know hire a fishing guide these are people that want you to catch fish they want to teach you so yeah there's yeah. a lot of options there's also some good local community like 
stuff too. Like I got into, so I picked up a fly fishing rod and I wasn't sure if I was really going to get into it. Uh, so I bought one secondhand and mm -hmm. got a good deal on it. It was a great rod and you know what, I'm totally hooked to it. And you know, there's the Ottawa Fly Fishing Society and yeah. um, you know, there there's a lot of knowledge there and they actually partner with local retailers too. So they're partnered with like Cabela's and stuff like that. So, you know, that's a, a great way to get started um, mm -hmm. to, into any sort of sport. But go and find the community, introduce yourself and be a part of it. That's yeah. that's the biggest piece of advice that I, I would have like anybody. I feel like most, you know, most of us <clears> as <throat> anglers are like super thrilled when somebody asks a question, like even if it's online or in person, like I've been at tackle shops before and I'll see another woman like looking around and then she'll just start talking to me because I'm buying lures. So, I mean, we're all friendly, I would say. Most of us are friendly and we love talking about what we love, so talk to an angler i mean i'm sure they'll point you in the right direction mm -hmm. so. the only time i'm not very friendly is when i see a kayaker not wearing a life jacket mm. <laughs> oh my yeah. god that really irks me and yeah uh, yeah i know it's yeah, it's not mandatory according to uh the you have to have it in the vessel not necessarily on is exactly kind of but I, I i personally think that that should not mm -hmm. apply to kayak fishing or should be on. Oh, it should be yeah. on you, you yeah. that's the only way that it saves well lives. the thing is if you happen to hit your head <clears throat> and you're unconscious like you should wear a life jacket so I yeah. mean, so you're like, standing up in the in the kayaks as well and you yeah. exactly. fall backwards and, and properly wear a life jacket because yeah. i have seen people with their life jackets on but they're open mm -hmm. because it's too hot well get a different life jacket well that's the thing hot. it's not like life jackets haven't evolved design wise they're like they're so it's pretty now. amazing yeah they're they're totally tailored for comfort and performance now there's really yeah. no reason not to wear yeah, the one yeah. you wear is the inflatable one right yeah, so yeah. Loose, and i've actually had a scenario where like you know we're getting off the water or something forget it's on get into the truck drive away or like eric took his off my partner and set it down and then i thought it was mine so i went to put it on and i was like oh i'm already wearing mine like right. it's yeah. just kind of forget it's there right? so yeah, yeah really no excuse good point that's a great yeah. point yeah um is anybody familiar with a sea ghost 110 boat no. sea ghost vibe i think it's vibe yeah Sorry, um, I, I mean i know it's a it's a you know vibe is a brand but no uh, I haven't used I've never used. It's not a good brand. I've never heard of them either. Are they? Yeah. So Vive is uh, a common brand. It's a popular brand yeah. in the U.S. Uh, I you mean, you don't see them much in Canada. It's, you don't know. It's we're a couple years behind. I find in Canada yeah. when it comes to like paddle sports trends. Like SUP was really big in the United States for a few years yeah. before the Canadians caught on to it. And I feel like it's the same thing with kayak fishing. Uh, I mean, one like in Florida, you can basically fish all year round. So I think we're. Just I think also to get up into our country, you have the good distribution network. I mean, Jackson, yeah. totally. you know, Confluence Brands and Native. Yeah, they're already they, established. They established, they're, yeah, you know, they exactly. can get up here where yeah. smaller brands that maybe have maybe a really substantially good product just can't get into the market. Get into that market, yeah. I mean, it is a huge territory and not a huge population too, yeah. right? You know, if you look at the size of Canada in comparison to the United States and you look at our population, we're yeah. 36 million, 37 million, and they're... 400 million yeah. or something like that yeah. so yeah which is why we have such great lakes as well totally so, yeah so yeah. amazing fishing yeah it is it is pretty great um i have another question sorry pat no it's all good dave um what's a good fishing technique you would share with a new kayak angler Ugh. technique i got one okay go. go okay so in this you know doesn't just only go for kayak fishing but you know, I spend a lot of time taking other people fishing from, you know, various know experience levels. <laughs> and one rig that even I use, and I spend a lot of time fishing, but also introducing kids or people that don't spend a lot of time. Do you know what I'm going to say? I think so. Does it start with an N? No, no actually, okay. no. So mine's a technique that typically primarily for bass fishing, I've caught other species on it, but it's called the Ned Rig. Mm. And it's super effective. It's crazy. It like, I throw it so much now. And basically, it's just a little mushroom jig head with a, like, basically like a half a Senko on there. And you can cast it at shorelines. You can cast it around structure. You can let it sink. You can hop it. You can let it sit on bottom. So there's really no bad way to work it. So it's great for people learning, and I use it a ton. I'm so. kind of excited to try that little uh, you that might, rig. I know. Yeah, yeah, it's super yeah, fun. Yeah. And there's a brand called um, 
Z-Man, and, you know, I don't have any affiliation with any taco companies or anything. I just use whatever I like. Hey, get um, at her if you want her to... No, I'm good, I'm good. I, I like to be neutral. So, anyways, uh, Z-Man makes a special plastic called Elastic, and you can literally take the Senko and stretch it out like that, and the salt that's imp salt impregnated, the salt will seep out. But it's super stretchy, so, you know, Senko's... Most Senko materials, they tear up, and you have to keep changing and changing it all the time, going through a lot of baits. So the Z-Man, you put it on, and it stays on for a long time. Not if you use the rapid fishing solutions. Oh. oh. Hook on to it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> rapid <laughs> boom. Yeah. We're, we're part of our sweepstakes. So. I've yeah. seen that, actually. It's like a little keeper on the hook so that That's your bait right. doesn't slide off. Exactly. Yeah. It actually keeps the bait for a lot longer. I've actually used um, a Senko. Texas rig, mm. a whole day catching fish on yeah. one single. Which is not too with, common. With no, because they tear, they tear good, up right away. Right? And actually one one technique that I was, I thought that you were going to mention is the wacky rig single. Yeah. That is what I have all my kids, well I started them when they were probably five, six year old, years old mm. and they're now 17 and 15. And just put a wacky rig sinkhole. It's just like a circle hook. Yep. Put your sinkhole, which is a worm, which is what, like, like five, five, uh, five inches or yeah. so? Yeah. You just hook it through the middle, and this is what it does. Whenever you cast, just goes down, it down. just wobbles down. So that's why it's a wacky rig sinkhole. Cool. And it's so effective. Oh my God, just fish just love. I feel like I need to up my fishing game. Well, we're gonna have to get these guys to do <laughs> yeah. some videos on like these rigs because it's, you know, you're talking about them, but it'd be cool to see you guys. I have some videos so, on, yeah. my, All on right. my YouTube channel. She loves to fish. She loves to fish. Yeah, I've there been doing more video. Uh, you know, okay. I've been writing for like this year, it'll be 10 years I've been writing wow. for my blog and various publications. So. I'm gearing more towards video now, so I'm trying to do because it's you know it's nice to read articles, but when you can see someone actually mm -hmm. catching totally. fish, it helps yeah. and it's fun, right? It's nice to. I kind of think of it as like home movies, like a mm -hmm. film yeah. in the day. And yeah. but anyways, I do have a video on my channel about fishing in that rig. Yeah. So so check awesome, it out. check it out. <laughs> she loves to fish, uh, and we're also we're gonna make a point to try and get you guys to do some more videos for us. Mm -hmm. and, and, Sweet. Uh, yeah, and we'll try and facilitate that. We're in. Sure. So. Well, awesome. I said you're in, but I assume you are. Rupert. I'm in. Yeah. yeah. I'm in. I knew she you says did. I'm in. <laughs> I was all <following> told. <laughs> uh, Another one. What oh, okay. attributes should a new kayak angler look for when selecting a paddle? Oh, that would be a good question for you. Um, yeah, and actually I have an article uh, on how to choose the right paddle that I posted on the Bending Branches mm -hmm. uh, website. And it's actually called How to Choose the Right Paddle. So if you guys want to Google it and read more mm -hmm. up on it. But there's two things that play a big important factor in choosing the right paddle. First is how tall you are mm -hmm. and how wide your vessel is. Then you can go into what kind of a paddler am I? Am I a low angler paddler or am I a high angler paddler? Mm -hmm. Usually for recreational vessels or when you're in sit inside kayaks, you're more like a low angler paddler. Yeah. So the paddles are actually a little bit more um, longer. 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 Yeah, yeah, exactly. The blades, yeah. Exactly. And when you're in a high angler paddle, which is in the case of kayak fishing, mm -hmm. because you have that high sitting position mm -hmm. plus they're heavier bolts, you need a lot more push yeah. per stroke. They're bigger paddles, so you keeping the blade. Doing that. Yeah, down so it's a wide boat. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Very yeah. close to the to the mm -hmm. side of the boat. And well it all depends on how wide your your uh, your boat is, how tall you are, but I find that most people are okay with a paddle that's two hundred and forty centimeters to about two fifty five, mm -hmm. two sixty. And the good thing is that now uh, people, uh, companies like Bending Branches, one of our sponsors for the sweepstakes, mm -hmm. is making the uh, Ferro Plus uh, paddles mm -hmm. that, you know, you can adjust them and they come in like, I think they're, yeah, they're 15 centimeter increments. So right. they have paddles that you can adjust, you know, all the way close is like 240 centimeters, so you and then you can yeah. adjust it like yeah. to yeah. make well, it to up to 255. Yeah. So it's actually pretty good. Nice, good yeah, question. so that's probably your best bang for your yeah. buck there. Exactly. Is, is I mean, there just makes great stuff too. And one thing I mentioned in that article is get the most expensive paddle that you can afford because usually they're going to be the lightest paddles, mm -hmm. uh, the better paddles, 
And uh, another comparison that I always make is every ounce that you, you shave off, you know, the weight of the paddle is the equivalent of not having to push a hundred pounds every hour of paddling. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. We always, yeah. That, that same conversation comes out when we talk about carbon versus fiber <clears throat> exactly. paddles. That, why is it so much more expensive? Is it really worth it? But you think about a whole day of paddling, that 30 or 40, you know, well, three or, three or 40 grams uh, mm -hmm. of weight on the end of that paddle shaft over and over and over adds up to you know, hundreds of pounds. Yeah, yeah, and our days are probably eight, ten, sometimes when I'm, uh, when I've been, you know, shooting with James Hammonds and the kayak fishing show, we put in probably like 10 hours of yeah. paddling yeah. per day. Yeah. So yeah. a lighter paddle mm -hmm. comes in very handy on those situations. Wood or composite? What do you like most for, for paddling? Like a wood paddle or like a composite paddle? Uh, I actually like um, the composite. It's, mm -hmm. it's basically fiberglass, a reinforced fiberglass, mm -hmm. what, I, what we use in our paddles. And uh, that's one that takes a little bit more beating. Mm -hmm. But I really like the weight of a pure carbon fiber paddle. Right, uh, right now, Bending Branches has the Angler Pro Carbon. Yeah. And that's a very light paddle. Yeah. It's 26 ounces or 20. Yeah, about that, 26 ounces. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, I mean, Benny Branches, I mean, not just because they sponsored the show, we know Ed and we know Jake and we know Andrew and we see these guys. guys and hey, Andrew. we yeah. go to trade shows behind the scenes, these guys, and we it's not just great product, it's also a pretty awesome company with, with great people. So yeah. Super great people. Yeah. You know what you're going to get every time you yeah. talk exactly. to these guys. Yeah. Um, question from me. Uh, you what's ask your... yourself a question? No, I'm going to oh. ask <laughs> these two questions. Okay. Pat, why are you so handsome? Um, <laughs> uh, what's your go-to level six piece of gear? And the follow-up to that question is, how does your gear choice change throughout the season when it comes to what you're wearing as far as gear? All Ladies right. first. So, you know, I just started here, and I'm super impressed by all that you guys have made here. It's pretty cool, especially getting to talk to you. Have you designed it, and... Uh, yeah, so I'm actually wearing one of my favorite level 6 items, which is the Sombrio, and this is neoprene, like probably doesn't really look like it on camera, but um, I have a black and a pink um, version of this, and it's going to be joining me on a lot of fishing adventures, so it's super, you know, neoprene, people often think of it as super stiff, and I mean, this is really soft, it feels like and cotton like just a nice hoodie mm -hmm. and it's really soft on the inside breathable so you know i wore um the black when i was out on my last fishing trip out on lake ontario targeting lake trout it's a little cooler right now but it was a good like hoodie to wear out on the water and also the uni suit <laughs> i did like a cheesy little <laughs> instagram <laughs> story yeah. yeah that's a nice base Pajamas layer even. Exactly, and I, you know, I fish year-round, so base layers are just as important as, like, sun protective clothing as well, and uh, you guys have a good variety, so. Yeah. What about rain gear? Um, what do you guys recommend for fishing in the rain? Roberto is wearing a pretty sweet jacket. Yeah. Uh, I actually have the Nahani yep. uh, jacket on, and usually when I'm fishing, I uh, put on a pair of bibs, actually. I have actually the backwater... Uh, breakwater. Yeah. Breakwater uh, bibs mm -hmm. with the Nahani jacket, and it's, like, amazing. Okay. Uh, okay. Jesse, you want to pull those on. products up uh, on our website yeah. just to show the sure. um, that yeah. particular... Um, yeah, so the Nahani um, is, is a canoe tripping jacket is what we designed uh, design the, the intended use for, yep. but um, yeah, the, the really fun thing about this whole <clears throat> kayak fishing market emerging is that we're creating these products, and then the kayak fishing community is just adopting them. Like, yeah, it's super functional for this, and then they'll, all, you know, you're very good at offering us like little tweaks on mm -hmm. how we can make it more kayak fishing specific or just fishing specific in general. Um, but almost, yeah, kayak fishing is almost like a you know a bit of a cross between. <laughs> canoeing totally and you know sea kayaking yeah you know, you're, get, you're getting out of the enclosure and but for canoe you're actually getting down to the, the kayaking position and you see those products that were kind of are good for both tend to blend nicely for kayak fishing yeah yeah so the nahani like notable features you've got like the the um, pu 
coated uh, cuff or lycra coated cuff. Mm -hmm. So it keeps like all the drip and stuff out of your uh, out of your wrist when you're paddling. Uh, and then the breakwater bib pants are great for wading. So if you're so that's the the cuff we're talking yeah. about there. So that actually creates a watertight seal. Uh, and then you've got an overcuff to make it look mm -hmm. like it's not a paddling jacket. And then the breakwater bib pant that we have behind us uh, is. Um, it's super low profile suspenders, so it's not, there's no big bulky um, buckles on it. So yeah. it is quite comfortable to wear, as you'd say, with a life jacket, right? Yeah. Um, or if you're wearing any layers over top of it. Uh, and then it also acts like a full on waiter. So if you're going to get out of the water, like you, you're right, you can go right past your waist. Yeah. Um, so if you're fly fishing, great piece of gear. If you're kayaking, great piece of gear. Um, so it, that's, you know, we had no idea when we were designing it that it would kind of flow into that, that side of the market. Totally has. And we're actually redesigning it for next year, yeah, 2020. 2020. We'll have a so there's going to come with a few new tweaks to it, and we'll release that at um, Paddle Sports Retailer yeah, in, August. Uh, in August in Oklahoma City. So stay tuned for that. We try and give sneak peeks here and there. Yep. Um, but yeah, so that's that's awesome. Yeah, the the, um, the honey jacket and then the um, the breakwater bib pants. Yeah, yeah, for rain for yeah. rain gear. It's uh, it's good to go. So, it's yeah. kind of dangerous working in a place like this with all this nice clothing. <laughs> I think one of the first like three few months that I worked here, yeah. I was just yeah. buying gear all the time. Yeah. Well, there's so many nice things. So, yeah, and it's totally. nice to have some options for women too. Yeah. So that's a huge yeah. thing that gets missed. So. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tougher market to service. There's just so many different shapes and sizes. It's kind of a smaller market in some senses. Yeah. Um, so to make like that really technical piece of gear for specifically for women has yeah. been a challenge. But we are coming, finding ways to navigate yeah, around. Yeah, we're coming out next year. Yeah. Yeah. You guys awesome. make you know gear for year-round paddling, which is something that I really like about mm -hmm. this. Like, yeah. You were saying the unisuit. I like the hot fuzz uh, yeah. when yeah, I go exactly. ice fishing too. Uh, you use the emperor, don't you? I, in the winter I use the emperor in the fall and yeah. the spring, which is actually going to come pretty handy next week when I'm out in the yeah. um, Lower Niagara River. Yeah. Uh, it's a great piece of gear. It's not as bulky as it seems it is. It's breathable. Well, it's a full on dry suit too, right? Yeah, like you're exactly. Stay and dry. It, it's <laughs> something that it's a good investment. It's like yeah. it's like a I call it a a, a, a life uh, a life insurance policy, yes. right? That totally. You, you yeah. have it there. You just hope you're never going to have to use it. Yeah. Right? But always be ready for something. There's like that. nothing better than going out on the water for the day and then getting up on dry. Yeah. Like there's something to be yeah. said for that. It's, it and, just makes it And then you better. guys have, you know, for yeah. the summer. Yep. Yeah. The yeah. So the shirts, sun protection line. Exactly. So do you guys wear, you guys are obviously sun protection Absolutely, clothing type yeah. people. Um, you're not sunscreen. I'm not one to use sunscreen. I hate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have feeling. to. Like I'm such a fair skinned person that I'm wearing like 50 SPF because I'll just burn. So yeah. I wear, I wear sunscreen on my face and like, you know, maybe the tops of my hands, but I wash my hands for touching anything like lures but uh sun shirts i prefer because i would that's rather wear a shirt that's comfortable than put on mm -hmm. greasy sunscreen yeah mm -hmm. i have a question so. from adam do you guys plan on beefing up the breakwater thighs and butts so ha! <laughs> he's found <laughs> our we found our secret yeah. yeah so adam part of the uh redesign for that's coming up for 2020 is we've reinforced the knees high wear area so knees uh, and seat panel yep. with three ply material. Uh, so this basically will give you added uh, protection against you know any sort of abrasion if you're yep. kneeling on shore or if you're sitting down in a boat or hooks too if yep. you're a kayak fisherman. Yep. Uh, that Modified the shoulder you. straps a bit. Yeah, <laughs> thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's actually in production right now. Yeah, it might even be available um, for the fall. It'll be available for thinking. this fall. Yeah, we're, we're going to launch it at Pal Sports Retailer in Oklahoma City and then Pal Expo in Germany. And then it'll be available right away to ship. So yeah, we've already been testing that. Yeah, we heard that call out last year, and yeah. so we've been been working on. We kind of repatterned a little bit too. So yeah. so great, yes. great call out there. You you got our secrets. See the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so what I was going into is uh, sun protection. You're, so you're wearing um, our Dune top, which is new for 2019, uh, and you got the first prototype that came out last summer. So you've had some testing. Any review that you can give us? I love it. it. It's so yeah. comfortable. I mean, it, I mean, it fits. It fits nice. You don't feel like you're mm -hmm. constrained and everything. I also have the long sleeve version yep. of it, and it's so it's great. It's actually fresh. 
when you when you're wearing it and you don't feel hot at all and yeah. it's actually giving you enough protection from, yep. from the sun. Yeah. So it's a UPF 35. Yeah. And um, yeah, the reason I like it in comparison to the UPF 50 material is that it's just so much lighter. Mm -hmm. Like especially in our climate here in the Ottawa area, super humid in the summer. It's just so sticky. Um, so to have that lighter weight material makes a big difference. For it it so. dries very quickly. Yeah. If you, mm -hmm. you know, if it gets too hot, you jump in the water, get back out, and it dries very quickly. Yeah. Well, and you know, there's something to be said about having the right clothing on. Like shirts like this, a lot of people wear cotton out on the water, and it's basically like wearing a plastic bag because you can have moisture building up, but it, there's no way for it to escape. And wearing, like, I've had heat stroke before, so I'm very conscious yeah. about, you know, being careful with what I'm wearing and just making sure I'm wearing something that allows, you know, air to pass through and sun protection, obviously, but it makes such a difference. And, it, and ultimately, you want to spend the most time on the water you can, so yeah. Yeah, having a shirt like there, this, yeah. you don't really, you're not sweating and, like, it's not staying in there. Yeah. So yeah, you don't good. have shade when you're out on the water, no. especially like where we're from. We have big bodies of water, so good yeah. luck finding shade. I when you're wore it all day area. at work. Yeah. But, so I came back from work. I came in here from work. Yeah. I wore it eight hours at work, and Still I didn't good. even feel it. It's, yeah. That's it, awesome. It's actually fresh. And yeah. Yeah. So you that's... don't smell that at all. Hmm? <laughs> I know we were we were trying to find that perfect fabric, and we looked at some of the Patagonia silk weight. You know that had that silk weight underwear. Um, it's just it's such a nice feel to it, and but it, was, it was too thin, so it's kind of like a compromise. It's a bit a bit heavier, but it has that same kind of feel to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But great. So that kind of wraps up my question. So mm -hmm. is there anything you guys want to discuss while you're here? You got a platform, shout it out to the world. You guys ask me about my kind of favorite fishing. Uh, nobody cares. I'm yeah, gonna say nobody cares. I'm gonna, I want to fish marlin yeah. in. Baja, Mexico, at some point before I die. We well, could have a meeting year. there. Yeah. Like, yeah, it meet might be a good meeting. idea. Yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. to meet Can ambassadors there. come to that? <laughs> yeah, they, 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 I can, I can be the translator, actually. Really, in, but I want to be yeah. on that boat when that thing is oh my God. Yeah, it's, hauled in. I just yeah. I hear it's the most insane thing. Yeah. Yeah, I would so. like to do that, too. Yeah, I agree. And then to eat it right after, too. Yeah. Oh, delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Or tuna, actually, to see a tuna. Yeah, like mahi, mahi. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Dolphin Making me hungry. fish is what they're called. Yeah. yeah. Sushi. Uh, any other questions there, Jesse, before we start our sign off? Oh, there is oh. one question. That is, that is my question. Uh -oh. So I'll ask you, and there I have a funny go. answer. But what is the craziest thing that's happened to you while kayak fishing that may not necessarily be related to, like, a big fish? Just any weird or crazy scenario that you've had. Do you have one? Not necessarily. I just had I've had fish jump in the kayak while you know hauling them in. I've had pike, you know, eating my smallmouth bass when I'm fighting them. That's really that's about yeah. Pulling yeah, them in. yeah, that's, yeah. That, that. that's yeah. it. That's that's the only thing that I can think of. I mean, crazy, funny, but it's actually it's nice. good. It's it's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a story that <laughs> is pretty crazy. <laughs> And, you know, when it happened, I went home, I posted on Facebook, and a few people, or one guy commented said he spit out his uh, cereal. Anyways, so I was out kayak fishing, and I was mooned. You were mooned, really? I was mooned. <laughs> By a fellow angler? Not, You're lucky I'm one. not drinking my beer right Two. now. <laughs> Multiple people, like Two on the same moons. boat, or yeah, separate boats? Yeah, so they boats. <laughs> threw on a boat, and they honked. And I turned to wave, and then I saw the pants coming down. Oh, God. So That's I quickly weird. turned and was like, okay, that did, like, I'm out on my own having a good time, and I just don't expect to get moved. So you didn't deserve it at all? <laughs> no. no. Okay. You Sounds like Jesse you. on a first date. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no comeback for that one. <laughs> That's just hate right now. So, so yeah, being yeah, don't do that. It was just unexpected. That is crazy. Like, yeah. right I've seen crazy fish, things butts. happen, like boat launches and stuff. Like, I'm sure you can attest to that. Yeah, just things right get pretty crazy. But never did I expect to be moved. Hmm. And I think I know who they were. Oh. Uh -oh. So, do you want to call them out now? No. Okay. No. But anyways, I, I think it was some, some boys from high school, you know? Okay, okay. But anyways. Classic boys. Yeah, boy classic thing boys. Yeah. That's why I, I don't I'm like not boys. for certain. Just, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that was my crazy story. So don't moon 
Ashley or yeah. Roberto. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't. I may have drawn her attention. Okay. There might be a better <laughs> chance of me being mooned more now just because people yeah. know. Oh, sure. no, there's <laughs> actually a thing. You'll be giving a guest talk What I'll do is mooning. just take a photo and tag you online. So, yeah, yeah don't. Okay, no mooning. No mooning. <laughs> How's Dougie's beer? Dougie's beer is delicious. Right. So, yeah, let's Amazing. do a quick... Yeah. What do you guys think of Doug Gilmore's beer brewed with the Whitewater Brewery? You guys, thumbs up, two thumbs up, three thumbs up? I'm, I'm going to say two thumbs up. Yeah, yeah thumbs like up it. and yeah. the big toast. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I still haven't had a, a bad Whitewater Brewery beer yet, so they're, they're, all, being, they're yeah. all being fantastic. So mm-hmm. this it's is definitely really my good. favorite. Awesome. I like the Farmer's yeah. Daughter beer. Yeah. Apparently, um, Dougie's a really nice guy, and I had a few of my, my like best friends. They went out on a, uh, a booze cruise, if you will, like a, like a bar hop, and uh, Doug Gilmore was on the bus. And the, the only thing that they said about Doug Gilmore is that he smells really good. Uh, ah. yeah, yeah, so Doug, <laughs> according good. to my friends, you smell really good. So uh, <laughs> if you're watching this. Um, thank you to the Whitewater Brewery yes, for thank supporting you. us. Thank you. Uh, really delicious beer. You can find yeah. this uh, at LCBOs. You can find it if you're in Ontario. You can find it anywhere in Canada. Metro. You can find it at grocery stores across yeah. Ontario. Because yeah, we're now allowed to buy beer at the grocery yes. store. Yeah, we're, we're behind, behind the, the U.S. Here. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Incredible. then check them out online. They're yeah. just great people. Yeah. Please support them uh, as much as you support us yeah. and, and the rest of the, the, the kayak fishing brands and stuff out there. So uh, thank you once again to Ashley and Roberto. Uh, we'll try and get you guys in here again at some point. Um, we're going to do your next tournament once a month. Actually. Yeah, awesome. so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, That'd be great. Next episode, we're not sure when we're going to roll that out just yet. Uh, I think I'm traveling that next first Friday. We try and do it first Friday of every month. I'm traveling, so we're, it might get postponed a little bit. I'm going to King of the Alps in Italy for yep. that event. Wow. Okay, so it might... We'll, we'll try and work We can do it at the around. end of May. We'll, maybe we'll do one end yeah. of May. Yeah, how about that? Uh, and just a heads up, we just launched it today. Um, we have our ultimate canoe tripping package yes so, so very good. similar to the kayak fishing package uh draw that we just did sweepstakes that we just did but this one is for canoe tripping uh package so we've got the nahani that uh, we were talking yep. about today the tomogamy pants we've got uh, barrel, harness. barrel harnesses pfds their night eyes is involved with us uh Gary. Water sh- Gary. shout out to Gary. they're watching are they yeah. sweet Watershed dry bags. bags. Yeah. They make excellent dry bags. Uh, and we also custom, custom made paddle. Uh, Andrew Zito, he's a local woodworking pro ex pro skater from the Ottawa area. Super yeah, interesting guy. So he made us this beautiful paddle. Out of uh, skateboards. Out of skateboards. So it's actually recycled skateboards. All this multicolored stuff that you're seeing here is all recycled skateboards with our little logo embroidered there. So you have the chance to win this bad boy. And it's it's a really beautiful paddle. I actually would love to hang this on my wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, enter online. And we have a signed copy of um, oh, Kevin yes. Callan's latest book too. Correct. Yeah. Kevin Callan, I'm not sure people in the US know, well they for sure, he travels yeah. everywhere. Uh, fantastic canoe leader, canoe speaker, kind of ambassador to getting people out in, out, out in the wild, out in the outdoors, and doing the canoe. Yeah. So check us out. Uh, oh, Jet Boyle is also a part of this. They uh, donated some some gear to this uh, sweepstakes. They're, they make really great stuff as well yeah, i've actually insane. i have jet boil uh, a jet boil stove uh that i use for trips um so yeah you can find the details for this on our web page live now it's live now you can follow us on instagram facebook twitter it's any social media platform it's all out there yeah. um so once again thank you very much for the questions for those of you that tuned in those are really great questions hopefully we can uh do get some keep these questions going for for our next uh, uh liquid lunch and um We hope you have a great weekend. Yeah. We hope you enjoy the water and we love you guys. And goodbye. Wear your PFDs. Wear your PFDs. Have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye.